For a brief moment in the early 1990s, Toki was just about everywhere. The minor arcade hit had somehow managed to swing over to everything from the Nintendo Entertainment System, to the Genesis, to the Lynx. And with all these console ports, it was starting to feel like Toki was destined to become the star of a long-running franchise. But that's not what happened. First developer Tad Corporation closed their doors, which was then followed by the planned Jaguar version being scrapped at the last second. With interest fading and no games in development, this looked like the final nail in Toki's coffin. Normally, that's where our story would end. The poor little guy would typically be filed away as just another 16-bit action game that could have gone on to something bigger and better. But this is no ordinary ape, and after a decade of development, Toki is back with a high-definition remake that both looks great and honors the spirit of the 1989 original. It's just a shame that it's yet another remake, and not the continuation of the story I've been hoping to see for almost 30 years. Now, a lot of this is going to sound awfully familiar if you played the 16-bit original. This is the story of a young warrior who is forced to travel across the prehistoric landscape in order to rescue his sweetheart, Miho, from the heinous demon Bashtar. As if that wasn't bad enough, Toki has been magically turned into an ape by a voodoo sorcerer. Now our hero not only has to fight against the odds to rescue the love of his life, but he'll also need to find a way to break the curse. As an ape, Toki is able to jump around and spit out deadly attacks. He'll occasionally need to swim through the water and swing from vines, but most of the time he's either jumping, spitting, or both. Along the way, he'll pick up a number of special attacks, such as blowing flames and spitting a spread shot. There are also new shoes that'll let him jump higher and a football helmet that'll keep him safe. Toki isn't the most agile monkey, but he has just enough moves to fight his way to defeat Bashtar. Much like the arcade original, the game is split up into six different stages. Toki does a good job at keeping things fresh with different backgrounds and obstacles, so expect to platform your way through ice stages, a fiery cave level, and a whole bunch of jungle settings. We're also given a bunch of lives and continues, as well as friendly checkpoints, so most players will have no trouble completing the incredibly short journey in a single sitting. Now, as a remake, Toki looks outstanding. The character is big and detailed, and the world he explores is equally impressive. It's easy to get jaded by HD graphics, but the hand-drawn look is easily the best part of this game. I was less interested in saving Miho than simply marveling at the busy backgrounds and cool-looking bosses. It's obvious that a lot of time and effort went into remaking this arcade classic, and I'd say that even if I didn't know that they spent nearly a decade developing this version. At its best, this is a faithful and loving tribute to the 1989 original. Unfortunately, this Toki remaster suffers from a lot of the same problems that plagued the earlier versions. As an ape, our hero is stiff and doesn't have a whole lot of moves. With the possible exception of spitting fireballs, there's really nothing Toki can do as an ape that he wouldn't have been able to do as a human. In fact, he may actually be at a huge disadvantage since he has this giant ape head that makes it even easier to get hit. And you're gonna get hit a lot because this game is filled with annoying cheap deaths. The hope is that you'll want to replay these levels to the point of memorizing all of the obstacles, but I'm not sure how many people will want to keep playing after that initial run. It's also a little disappointing that Toki dies from a single hit. While this is certainly true to the spirit of the original arcade game, there were home console versions that gave players hit points to balance things out. A lot of the frustrating deaths feel like a relic of an era where the whole goal was to suck quarters out of your pocket. Speaking of which, Toki is far too expensive at $30. Yes, it looks good and is a loving tribute to the original, but that price is absurd. The initial play took me about an hour to complete, which I have to assume will be even quicker once you've gone through the game more than once. And will you even want to play through the game more than once? With nothing here to keep you coming back, I have to guess that Toki is going to be a one and done for most players. Assuming they even get that far. As a remake, Toki gets almost everything right. It looks great, feels like the arcade original, and brings the fire-spitting ape into the 21st century. But as a modern game, this remake is a mess. It's far too expensive and doesn't offer much content. 
The gameplay is stiff, and the six stages are filled with the kind of frustrating deaths that were so common in arcade games of that era. I love the graphics and the decade-long journey it took to get this game onto the Switch, but this is a remake I can only recommend to diehard Toki fans. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. So here's the question I have for you. What classic arcade game should get a remake? For as much as I like Toki, I wish that Capcom would bring back the Speed Rumbler. It was basically the proto Grand Theft Auto, and I like the idea of seeing that kind of game with modern graphics. I can't wait to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Electronic Gaming Monthly's Best and Worst Awards. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 